Hi, welcome back to Food FAQ. I'm Mariella. And I'm Eric. And we are, what are we doing, Keter? We're going to do summer brunch, Madi, but, but we have a little twist on our summer brunch. We are going to talk about Bellinis to go with our summer brunch. I love brunch. Me too. Brunch is a really big thing in DC. Is it? It's it's like an all day event. <laughs> so it's a lot of fun. You go to brunch and you're there for quite a while. And then somehow you end up at dinner. I love so, that. We need yeah. to do that one day. We should do it when you're in. I don't know if we'll do it next time you're in town, but we should definitely do it and go get some brunch. There's a lot of really good brunch places here. Yeah. And you know, I like entertaining for brunch because it's not as expensive as like a dinner or a lunch. Right. But it's super fun and you can do like a many little arrays of things, which we've already discussed that this is how we like to eat. And there's alcohol. It's like the tapas for breakfast. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. That's the what we're calling this. Tapas for breakfast. <laughs> tapas for breakfast. I like so, that. What are we going to drink in this fun brunch? Oh, my goodness. So a lot of brunches, you have things like mimosas and you have... Oh, shoot. What's that drink with the tomato juice? The oh, yeah. Water. I forget. With celery, it's like a dinner. Yeah, it's gross. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. I don't like Bloody Marys. I like them, but they're like dinner in a glass. My mother loves Bloody Marys, and she makes it with Clamato. My mom, yeah. too. Really? It's an old lady thing, like Maybe for their time. Old lady thing because <laughs> I can't stand it. It's liquid lunch. It's gross. So we're gonna talk about <laughs> we're gonna talk about Bellinis. And I think the first thing we need to talk about is what is an actual Bellini. Okay. Okay. And a Bellini is a simple drink. It's prosecco and it's peach puree. And what's Maybe. prosecco? Like, how do you explain it? You know, the best way I can explain prosecco, it's like an Italian, you know, bubbly wine. Yeah. So it's like a fizz. So think of like, you know, it's not a champagne, but Think of a sparkling wine, but it's an Italian sparkling wine. Yeah, it's, it's dry. It's great to even drink on its own, too. Yeah, I like it. So it, a Bellini is simple. You just put the peach puree at the bottom of the glass, pour the Prosecco on top, and you can go ahead and just stir it up. And that's it. You have a Prosecco. Well, I'm sorry, not a Prosecco. A... You have a Bellini. Hmm? Yeah. And how do you make a puree? Purees are easy. So let's say you're making a peach puree. Okay. So what you can do is you can go ahead and just peel your peach. You go ahead, you put your peach, you take out, take, let's say you take three or four peaches, put them in a blender, take about a fourth of a cup of water and blend it up. That's mm -hmm. it. That's what? how you make a puree. That's it. You can put a little bit of honey in there. If you want to get a little bit of zest, you can put a little bit of lemon in there or a little bit of lime in there just to give it like a little spunk, but that's it. You don't need to heat anything up. It's going to go in a cold drink anyways. And you can run it through a sieve if you want, if you want to make it really smooth. You can do that. Yeah. But if you also blend it long enough, you're going to get all the lumps out anyways. So it, it's really easy. Now, peaches are a little bit difficult to peel. You may yeah. have to blanch it. Blanch it, meaning you just throw it in hot water just for a couple moments so you can peel it. But again, you can just run it through a blender with water, honey, lemon, and pour it through a sieve and you have a puree. What if I don't want to have a peach bellini? You don't have to. And that's the fun part, Mariella. Um, so there's a lot of cool things. So some of my favorite is a blueberry Bellini. Is this real or did you invent it? I, this is a real. So many, many, many years ago, here's the deal. I was on a business trip in Maine and I was out to breakfast one day, not drinking on the clock. It was on my day off. So I'm <laughs> out to, I have to make sure everybody <laughs> knows this. And I was out to breakfast one day and I saw a blueberry Bellini on the menu. So mm. blueberries are really popular in Maine, by the way. And so I had a blueberry Bellini and it was delicious. So once I did that, I realized that I can have, I, I can make any type of fruit into a puree and make it this that type of Bellini. Do you know actually where I had my first Bellini? No. It was with you. Where? Oh, and that's that, went to that Italian restaurant on Miami beach. Casa Tua, which is Casa still there. Tua. We were in oh. college and we saved our money. For weeks and to we go afford to eat there. And we split an entree and it was so pretty. We split an entree because we could not afford to have <laughs> each an entree. So oh, yeah, that was good. I remember that Bellini now. That was, delicious. that was, yes. And we ordered a Bellini and that was the first time I ever had a Bellini, like a real one. So a couple really cool things with Bellini. So I love the blueberry one. And again, very simple. Wash your blueberries. Throw a bunch of blueberries into a blender, put a little bit of water. You can put some honey. You can put some lime in there. Blend it all up. If you don't like the the remnants of the skin, go ahead and just put it through a sieve. And that's it. You go ahead yeah. and put it in your Prosecco. 
uh, strawberry is really good as well. That same exact process, throw them in a blender, blend it up, a little bit of water, a little bit of honey, you're done. The only thing is you cannot use frozen fruit with this. Yeah, it why not? Fresh fruit. Because frozen fruit is going to turn into like a being a slushy, which I guess oh. you could do. I'm into it. I mean, I guess you really could. It's just not going to be a puree. So it's not going to mix as well, I don't think. Oh, okay. But you can try it. Now, a favorite one, which I have tried, and it's the easiest one, Morella. All you do is you just go ahead, you put watermelon in a blender and just blend it up. Man, watermelon juice is like, my husband ordered a tank of, literally, it was like a 500 ounce of watermelon juice at like this tiny, you know, Palacio Little Hugo's over here in the corner. Do they still have those? Oh my God, yes. And that thing was so good. It was like $7 for this thing, but it was delicious. Watermelon juice is underrated. I love watermelon juice. I love watermelon. I can't yeah. wait for the summertime because watermelon. For everybody, is so for everybody, Palacio de los Jugos. That's a. It's like a fruit stand. It's called the Fruit Palace, and the it's Palace, gigantic. Right. And they sell you. They'll sell you your mother if you. <laughs> do they sell you fruit. They sell you food. They sell you whatever you need. It's all in there. Batteries, like whatever you need, you go over there. You got it. But it, watermelon juice is really underrated, and I love it. But anyways, oh. so the watermelon puree is the easiest. You just throw it in a blender. Just blend it up. And, and here's the thing. I don't put things through sieves just because I kind of like a little bit of the fruit pieces in there. That's just me. That's but if you want to be a little fancy, just again, put it through a sieve and you'll have a really fine puree. And Mariella, it's like endless. Any type of fruit you want to use, you can make a bellini out of. Oh my God. I and I think it's a lot idea. of fun. You could have a bellini bar. Listen to me. Cucumber mm. mint bellini. That might be pretty good. That would be yummy. But I'm wondering if you blend up a cucumber, if it's just going to be, well, no, if a watermelon works. Then you why not a to, cucumber? You have to gut the insides of the cucumber. Totally. No seeds, right? That would be disgusting. No seeds. You have to gut the seeds. Yeah. Ooh. We should I mean, that'd be that. really refreshing, like, especially on a hot day, especially a hot Miami day. Like a spa water. Believe me. But that gets you drunk. What's better we than We are curing water? cancer here. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. Wow. You. We are just changing the world Blue together. <laughs> But I think that the most important part is to have fun with the the Bellini and just use any fruit you want. And any fruit that's in season, any fruit that's local to your area, inexpensive. And I think you can have a lot of fun with that. Totally. So, and if you want to mocktail it, you just throw some fizzy water instead of fizzy yep. drink. You're done. Yep. So you can do, easy. You can do juice and fizzy water. You can do the puree and fizzy water. Puree and fizzy water is actually really good. That tastes, I mean, that sounds like it tastes delicious. I do that a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I'm in into fun Bellini town. I love it. That's next, Maddie. <laughs> we're gonna, gonna eat. eat. If we're gonna if we're gonna drink Bellinis, we need to eat something, right? Because they go to your head. That's what I mm-hmm. like about them. But they're like a nice even feel. Like I think champagne and bubbly drinks are like easier on your body. Is it just me? It, it well, it, it goes down really easy. <laughs> and and here's the deal like not to okay i don't want to sound like a snob but i'm going to if it's a good champagne or a good prosecco it goes down very easy yeah it's and, delicious. And it does get to your head really quick yeah okay so we're gonna have to eat food yeah so we're breaking this up right into food that we just simply assemble and it's fast and easy and then food that we will cook so we're gonna start with yes. assembling yes let's do it What's up? Food that you can assemble, always a salad, right? Salad is super simple to put together. Mm-hmm. And for summer, we were just talking about watermelon. There's nothing that says summer like watermelon. And there's nothing more expected, unexpected than putting it in a salad. Right. So what do you do? You cut up some watermelon, some feta, cucumber, arugula, basil, mint, whatever herbs you like. I think it's good to have a nice, healthy bunch in there. And... That's it. Just dress it simply with a little lemon, a little honey, a little salt, and you toss it together and you put it in a bowl and it's going to be like a showstopper because it's beautiful. It's mm. unexpected and it's super light and refreshing. I agree. This is the type of style that you want to actually make and eat pretty quick. Yeah. Like, I don't think this is something that you want to let sit over time just because the water is going to lose a it's lot yumminess. of it's, it's right. It's crispness and the feta, which is really salty with the sweet watermelon. It's going to. You want to make it and then eat it pretty yeah, quick. Absolutely. Morning of. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It's it's one of my favorite salads too. And the addition of cucumber is like, mm, I don't know. I'm having a cucumber moment, I feel. What's well, crunchy? It's like a nice crunchy taste right? without the carb. <laughs> I hate you carbs. <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> <laughs> All right. What else could we assemble, Kiki? 
Okay, so I love smoked salmon. I don't know if you like smoked salmon. I do too. I love smoked salmon. So smoked salmon, flatbread. And you can use any type of bread really for this. You can use a croissant. You can use an English muffin. You can use a brioche. Mm. You can use anything for this. You basically just got to crust it up a little bit. And you just go ahead. You put the smoked salmon on there. Well, go ahead. you, You take whatever bread of choice. Put some cream cheese or even goat cheese. Put some smoked salmon on there. Tomato, arugula, lemon, capers. And that's it. And it's quick and it's great. You're not really cooking anything. Right. Just so slapping something that sucker together. Exactly. You can even that make like little so crostinis good. out of them. You can make like little appetizers out of them or something that people can just pop in their mouth. I love that. I love that. And I think people, after the pandemic, I've become just much more appreciative of food that is individually sized, you know, where I don't like, have to be like touching anyone else's food. I just really appreciate like my own little mini version of whatever the thing is. And I don't know if it's because I've become more germ focused. I don't know. What do you think it is? Well, I think it's just, well, you know, I think it's a habit that we all got into. I know in, you know, the the organization I work for, whenever we order food for people, it needs to be at this point still kind of individually wrapped. You know, we don't really want to serve food that's in mass quantities just because we don't want to share any germs. People are disgusting. Everybody's sick, you know? (laughs) <laughs> and but I think what's kind of nice, um, people are not all disgusting, but <laughs> I, you know, but I, I think what's nice is is it's kind of like your own little serving, yes. And so it's something that's yours. It's something you can pick up. And when it's an individual servings, you can also control your serving a little bit better. You can have one True. piece, two pieces, and so. But honestly, this is not. Uh, when it comes to something like a smoked salmon flatbread or things like that, it's not really something so horrible for you. It's something mm-hmm. you can kind of enjoy. And it's brunch. Enjoy it. Yeah. Like forget about whatever. And let's not label it. Let's just eat it. Exactly. You don't even <laughs> want it. So we have drinks. We have things to assemble. Mm-hmm. We got to cook something. Yes. So. so I made, I love Spanish tortillas. And growing up in Miami, I think they're just more prevalent than probably other places in the States. Right. But they're usually thick and there's hardly any egg in there. It's just like filling, which is usually potatoes and onions and sometimes chorizo, which is a dry cured sausage, Spanish sausage. But um, making one can be challenging because you have to cook it and then you have to flip it so you can cook the underside once the bottom is done. So it's a little bit complicated. It takes a little bit of skill to flip the tortilla properly. Mm -hmm. So I went ahead and I personalized it. I used my muffin tins to go ahead and make little personal tortillas. And I did it using, I made four today. So you can duplicate the recipe as you'd like. I took one potato. I cubed it. I took half an onion. I, I, I made them kind of fine. And then you have to cook these things in oil, almost like bubbling, like, like boiling water almost. But uh, it's oil and you have to fry it up in that nice and gently. And then it smells so good, Eric. My God, my house smells so good because it's very it's a gentle kind of simmer. And the onions gets very sweet and the potatoes get very soft. So when they're done, you strain them out of the oil. And I use three eggs. I beat the eggs very well, made them kind of puffy and and like volume to them, you know, some whip into them. And then I added the potatoes and the onion mixture. And then I put olive oil in each little crevice of my muffin tin. I spread it with my hands and then I added enough to divide it into four. I put it in my air fryer, which I make literally everything in my air fryer. I'm sure you can make this in the oven. No problem. Foolproof. 425 for eight minutes on air fry. And they taste like remarkably authentic to be no, like I'm, a little muffin tin situation. I'm going to give you a compliment here. When you describe food, you sound like Nigella Lawson, which is like, <laughs> you know how it's almost like sex. That's how you describe food. <laughs> I really no, love really talking about you food. Like, think of like actually eating it and how delicious it is and things yes. like that. And you know, it's funny. I don't like egg. I'm not right. an egg person. I do not like egg at all. But a tortilla, like a Spanish tortilla has always been something I do like just because there's a bunch of ingredients packed in the egg is just kind of like a crusty binder on the outside of it. Yes. And it just becomes this really crusty, but then on the inside, the egg becomes creamy. So it's just like this really great 
item. And for someone who does not eat eggs, this is a mm-hmm. recipe that absolutely I love. Yes. And if you're interested in trying chorizo and you can't find it where you're at, I just bought at my Publix. Um, it's called, it's a boar's head at the deli. You ask them to slice it. Boar's head chorizo serrano. Chorizo serrano. <laughs> It's what it's called. <laughs> and it tastes just like regular, regular chorizo that you could find cured. There's also, you know, living in an area that, you know, there is a Hispanic population in the D.C. area, of course. You know, I live in the suburbs. And, you know, I have to go to specialty markets to be able to get chorizo and stuff like that. But in a lot of other grocery stores, there is a, and I forgot the name of it, it's a Brazilian chorizo. Mm-hmm. And it almost looks like an Italian sausage. So you'd have to take it out of the casing and actually cook it. Whereas instead of like the Spanish chorizo, that's usually kind of pre, that's, you know, it preserved, is. you know, that you can just eat out of the package. This, you just kind of have to cook. So there are other options that you can do yeah. if you want to use a type of chorizo. And I think Mari almost based, I mean, I would not do like, you know, an Italian sausage or anything like that. No. Or just because the flavor is going to be off but any type if you can find any type of you know like i said brazilian chorizo there are, many of the countries carry chorizo in your grocery store and i think that will go well with it too and there's another thing i wanted to mention i don't know about you but it took me a minute to figure out how to salt eggs in making an omelet do you have a tri- i have a tip okay T- tell me your tip and i'm going to really quickly brush up on an egg thing really quick but tell me your tip <laughs> So I crack the eggs into the bowl, right? Okay. And then I use kosher salt, um, the, whatever the brand is with the girl. I can't remember her name. And um, more is it Morton? Morton, yeah. Okay. So what I do is I grab a pinch of salt and I salt the yolk as I would if it were in front of me and cooked and I was about to eat it, right? Okay. I salt each yolk individually. And then I put a little smattering of salt on the whites and then I whip it. And it is always perfectly seasoned when I eat it. Always. I don't eat eggs. I like know. I do not eat eggs. But this weekend, I had a very handsome guest in town named Cameron. Don't worry, Ryan knows. Okay. <laughs> and very handsome guest in town. And he wanted eggs for breakfast. And again, I do not cook eggs. So it's so funny you mentioned that. Because when I made a scramble for him, which had peppers and onions and ham and whatnot, I salted the eggs before I beat it. And that's hysterically said that because when I cracked the eggs and put them in the in the bowl, I salted each egg individually and then whipped it up. And it came out perfectly salted. That's when it. I did that. So that's really weird because you and I did that without Yeah. Without the, talking about it. Right. But that's the way to do it. There's no other way. <laughs> right. So tortilla it total win. And I think uh, awesome that you have it individually served. So I think that's yes. great. And they're that's pretty. Cool. Very pretty. They are pretty. And my husband loved them too. So I, I, look, I test these recipes and like children and adults alike so they can be trusted. Oh, that is true. <laughs> what that else you got true. for me? Okay. So I have a, a showstopper for you. Ugh. And you're going to love it. It's candied bacon. And this is like, oh, God, it's so say good. It again. <laughs> so what? Say it again. <laughs> And it is, it, it, it's at a, if you go to a lot of brunches, you'll see candy bacon. Mariela is the easiest thing to make. Mm-hmm. So you're just going to get regular cut bacon. Don't get the thick cut because you want this to be crispy. So thick cut is going to be a little harder to get crispy. So just get the regular cut bacon. I would not get like any type of seasoned bacon. Just get the plain bacon. I know there's like maple flavored and things like that. Don't get that. Just get regular bacon. You're going to preheat your oven to 325 degrees. Take a baking sheet. Put some parchment paper on it. And then in a bowl, you're going to take some brown sugar and you can take a little bit of cracked black pepper and put it in there. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to take your bacon. You're just going to zhuzh it in the sugar and pepper mixture. And then you're just going to lay it out on the cooking sheet with parchment paper and let it go for about 25 minutes. Mm-hmm. Only thing I can say is when that comes out, don't touch it yet because... <laughs> It's, it's molten sugar. Yeah. And you know, when you cook sugar, how it literally becomes like lava. Yeah. So you have to actually let it sit there and let it harden and candy. And then that's it. It's the easiest thing. Take it right out and you have candy bacon and that goes mm. anything. It's, I so love good. that. It's like sweet. It's like, you know, the cured meat is a little salty. And like I said, throw a little black pepper in there just for like a kick. Yeah. And it is so good. That's like if brunch was a like personified. That is brunch personified. Sweet, salty, crispy, yeah. and bacon. It's like a showstopper. You could even put skewers through it if you want and let it cook on the skewers and you can make like candied like little bacon, ribbons. Popsicles. So 
cute. Oh, I like that. I want to make a candy mm-hmm. popsicle with bacon. Okay, it's so it. good. But yeah, okay, and that, and then you can stand them up in like a pretty little like clear vase or something, and you can. Like, yeah. I like that idea. That's pretty. And the people just take what they want. Yeah, and then okay, It'll so then gone. what? It'll be gone. People will eat this. Yeah, I mean, who's not going to want to eat bacon on a stick? One, two. It's sugared bacon. Forget it. Brown sugar. Big fan of brown sugar. It's delicious. So now I want to talk about a disappointment, Eric. Okay. This is sad. <laughs> I saw the pictures. <laughs> I tried to make this banana upside down cake from TikTok with the caramelized bananas on the bottom. And it's like a banana bread on the top. Chocolate. Have you seen this? Yeah. Yep. We were both excited about this. <sighs> I think everybody's seen it. And um, I tried it and it was horrendously bad. It was so bad. Bad, bad, bad. The candy part on the bot on the top was like so sweet and yucky and like it, it was too much and then the actual cake part or the banana bread part didn't taste like much it was bland it was a giant disappointment and let me tell you tiktok has really never steered me wrong but this was an f tiktok situation yeah so but you know what i took that lemon and i made lemonade <laughs> i was inspired by this situation I decided today, actually, we were just panicking or I was panicking about what am I going to make that's sweet and delicious for this brunch, right? So I took the banana idea, right? Mm -hmm. And I made bananas foster with coconut rum because it's what I had. And how do you make bananas foster? You take about half a stick of butter, three quarters of a cup of brown sugar, a dash of cinnamon, and you put it over the stove over like, I'd say medium-ish, medium-high-ish heat, and you let it Mm -hmm. bubble. And then I chopped up the bananas. I cubed them. Since this will be a topping, I want it to be something easily grabbed by a spoon, right? And shared amongst many people. And then once the bananas are in there and they're nice and brown, you go ahead and I added the rum. I think it was like half a cup of rum, maybe, maybe a little bit less. And it becomes like syrupy and delicious. I didn't light it on fire because I didn't have a lighter long enough and I don't want to lose my eyebrows. But you cook it long enough, the alcohol cooks off. I had the coconut rum, but I'm sure it'll work without flavored rum. It's just what I had. But delicious nonetheless. I mean, I think it worked with almost any rum. Because Absolutely. Because you, you just want that you just want that flavor of the rum anyways. Yes. That's what makes bananas foster just kind of special is the flavor of the alcohol. I agree. But you could probably almost use most. You could probably use a brandy. You can use. Yeah. Anything like that. A dark like rum. Like any alcohol that you want to drink. I think yeah. you can use that. Yes. And then I set it aside. I wanted to see how I would do if you just kind of put it aside for a minute. And it does well. Just so you know. Okay. And then I decided. I took. I'm like, is whipped yogurt a thing? I don't know. So I tried it. Right. I tried whipping yogurt. And okay. it didn't really do what I wanted. So I added heavy cream to it. So I'd say if you're going to have a big container of Greek yogurt, uh, like, you know, I don't know how many ounces there are. I'm going to say it's like 32 ounces, maybe. To that, you go ahead. Okay, so separately, you whip up one cup of heavy cream and you make it into whipped cream. I did that and I sweetened it with brown sugar because I love brown sugar whipped cream. Have you tried this before? No. Divine. You should really try it. really good. I really love it. And so I made brown sugar whipped cream with one cup of whipped cream. And I don't know, the sugar I kind of measured with my heart, but I want to say maybe like three tablespoons, you know. And then I folded it into the yogurt to make it fluffy and voluminous. And then you put a little serving of yogurt and then you spoon over the bananas foster. Your life will change. That sounds amazing. It is divine, 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 divine. I love it. Yes. And it takes like it's sweet. And sure, it's got heavy cream in it, but you know, they don't have carbs, right? Heavy cream. <laughs> it's keto friendly. No, you know? sure. it's keto. <laughs> With the it brown is. sugar. The, the sugar is not. <laughs> heavy cream is, is keto, I think. Oh my God. Whipped Greek yogurt is a, a revelation. And, and I haven't even looked online to see if it's a thing. I'm sure it is. I'm sure not the only I think person that thought of this. We're going to claim it. We're going to claim it here in a food FAQ. Right here. I'm Christopher Columbus of Greek yogurt. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> Something else can't, something else great came out of the island of Puerto Rico besides you. <laughs> Your idea of whipped yogurt. <laughs> so good, Eric. Oh my God. This I will make for you when I see you because yes, it is no, that sounds worthy really of being like tried by many. And who's allergic to bananas? Is Ryan allergic or just doesn't like them? No, he just doesn't like them. Okay. That's different. So I won't kill him if I make it at the house. Right. He just doesn't like them. 
yeah, I don't want to kill anybody, but I definitely want to feed you. And this bread. So recap, right? We're going to have a salad, a smoked salmon flatbread, tortillas, bacon. Uh, what is this whip yogurt situation? I mean, this is a spread and Bellinis are like the queen again. Bellini. You are the queen of drinks. <laughs> You, that is a great tag name for me. And then if we could just give a quick honorable mention, because you're going to have a lot of leftovers, the leftover ingredients here. Yeah. And this is kind of what I did with Cameron's breakfast that we talked about earlier today. Yeah. When I had leftover peppers and onions and you would have leftover potatoes from the tortillas you're making and take all of that together, put it, put olive oil in a pan, get your favorite seasonings, take it together. Throw it in a skillet and get it really hot and just make yourself a quick, uh, like a potato hash with it. Oh my God, I forgot and this about will the hash. Up all of our ingredients. Cause that's the main thing. Let's get all of our ingredients used up in a great way. And a hash is easy. Again, you could do potatoes, peppers, onions, salt, pepper, olive oil, get it really nice and crispy and done. You have a I hash. I have hack. A, a hash hack that I like to use. I'm going to call it that. Um, Hashtag hash hack. <laughs> like, you, you, you got away with the whipped yogurt but now we're stretching too far here it's, it's a bridge too far I just... <laughs> you're, you went a little too far with that we're not of that generation so go on please <laughs> okay well i got i get a potato and i like prick it with a fork and then mm-hmm. i cover it in a wet paper towel and i microwave it or however many potatoes i need to make the hash and i microwave it for like five minutes to get them started and right. then I peel them and I cut them up and then I finish them off in the oil in the pan. Cause I find that cooking a potato is a giant time suck. It might, it is right. It is. They take, cause they take longer than anything else. You're going to cook the potatoes first before you put anything else in there. Yeah. So the, it that takes a long time. is a good way to just like cut out the middleman a little bit and get them going. Right. Although I, I like skin on my potatoes. Even when I cook it for a hash or something like that, I like skin on my potatoes. We're all wrong about something. Whoa. We'll figure this out later. It has to be potato skin free. What's wrong with you? No. Maddie, that's what helps get the crispiness on the, you know what? (laughs) You don't know what you're talking about. Stick your tortillas. You gotta make me this skin hash of yours and I'll try. I'll make you my skin hash and you'll see how correct I am about this. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Well, this sounds like a very complete brunch to me. It's a massive brunch. And that's a great thing. You don't have to do all of this. Just take a couple of them to make the brunch. But if you did do all of this, it's really easy. You can get done a couple hours. What's great about brunch, it's not served at 8 o'clock in the morning. Serve mm-hmm. brunch like at 10 or 11. And it's just going to be a massive, delicious meal for your family, your guests, your friends. You'll be full all day. And a little tipsy with your bellini. Yay! And you can make a lot of these things ahead, right? You can make the Greek yogurt mm-hmm. thing, the hash, the the bacon, the tortillas. You can make those things ahead. Most of yeah. these things you can make ahead. Maybe except the salad, I would make it closer to... Make the, the salad closer. You, you can make the yeah. puree for the bellinis the night before. You so, can. That's a good it, idea. It stays for a couple of days. It stays for like two or three days in your refrigerator. Just put it in a closed container, closed Tupperware, airtight. I like and that. it's good for a couple of days. So we're really, we're deep into this summer situation and the ideas are just, they don't stop coming. I am so inspired by the yeah. season, which is weird because I never, I hate the summer. It's I'm not a big summer cool. person, but I think when it comes to like, okay, so when it comes to beverages, I'm a big summer person. You are. But I don't like the heat. No, but I like this food. Yeah, the food's great. <laughs> I'm hungry for this brunch. It needs a name. Uh, Fun Bellinis is what I thought of, but I don't like it anymore. Mariella and Eric's excellent brunch adventure. Here in Wayne's World, party time. That's that is like two me. totally separate, <laughs> different things. I know, I know, but that's what it reminded me. Of. <laughs> but you know what? Good moment to end because you've gone two totally separate ways. Uh. All right. Well, I hope you enjoy this brunch, you guys. And next week, we're going to come back with more summer fun. A little bit surprising. I think we're going to do summer desserts next time. Yep. Big things. I don't know. It's going to be delicious. And I'm very excited. And I can't wait to have this chat with you, Keith. Maybe a cheesecake. Oh, my God. The cheesecake. We're going to figure this out. (laughs) We have a trauma story, but we'll cover that another time. We'll cover that later. (laughs) Bye. Bye Bye-bye.